marshes of the great interior plains of the North American continent are the breeding grounds of many thousands of ducks. As they come north in the spring, they wing their way across mile upon mile of lifeless cattails and cane grass. But they see below them the promise of the cover they will find when the summer turns the marshes green and luxuriant. In one of the Loch Manitoba, the Delta Waterfowl Research Station has been established. Here, extensive studies of the behavior and distribution of ducks are being made. The station has two or three small ponds where several species of ducks and geese are brought up in captivity. The scientists on the station use domesticated birds to study their habits and physiology. The ponds provide us a rare opportunity for a close look at some prairie ducks and geese. One of these is the ring-necked duck. The white ring on the bill is the best mark to look for. The canvas backs, sloping forehead, chestnut head, and whitish back distinguish it. Notice how even when it's dozing, it can bring itself head to wind again. This whistling swan is far from its breeding grounds in Arctic America, nor can it reach them, for its wings have been clipped. But not all the birds you can see here are captive. A small flock of yellow legs pauses on migration. The drake pintail is one of the handsomest of waterfowl. Pintails are strong flyers. They're known to be capable of great endurance and have flown across 2,000 miles of open ocean. But these drakes presumably just want to go over to see the duck on the other side of the pond. The study of ducks and geese provides valuable information on which to base laws for their protection and plans for establishing sanctuaries. The governments of Canada and the United States, as well as many private agencies, are cooperating in this important work. Wild ducks like these blue-winged teal sometimes fly into the pools to get a free meal. The mallard is the common wild duck of western North America. It is abundant in Europe and Asia as well. The drake has the brilliant green head. Some of the ducks breed and raise their families on the station, just as they would in the wild state. The resplendent wood duck is found mostly in eastern North America, where it likes to nest in hollow trees quite high above the ground. Two of the most interesting species at Delta are the blue goose and the lesser snow goose. That's the blue goose in the foreground. These two species of geese sometimes breed side by side on Baffin and other islands of the eastern Arctic. Because they breed so close together, blues and snows sometimes get confused as to the species and assume. This also happened to a pair at Delta where a snow gander mated with a blue goose. Some scientists now consider that the blue and the snow are not separate species, but color variations of the same one. Here, every year, though they are far removed from their natural breeding grounds, blue and snow geese successfully raise their families in captivity. Several pairs of Canada geese breed at Delta also, a small remnant of the thousands which once used to breed on the prairies. They prefer to nest on the ground near water. The goose sits on the eggs, but the gander stands on guard, ready to deal with any marauders. He has a keen eye and a sharp sense of hearing. Shortly after the young are hatched, they are ready to feed themselves. But for several weeks, both parents will escort them and teach them where to find the grasses, which are the main part of their diet. Here again, the watchful Canada goose is alert to the slightest sign of danger.
Sometimes the geese which have had their wings clipped are allowed freedom on a larger pond. Though they cannot fly, they seem to enjoy the water and dive into it with evident enthusiasm. Not many people have seen Canada geese diving. fit into the scheme of things in many remarkable ways. The tern lives off small fish, which swim just beneath the surface of the water. Its hovering flight makes it possible for the tern, almost stationary in the air, to spot its elusive prey. are now beyond the reach of man in places where they can bring up their young unmolested. At Delta, the lordly honker is not too proud to eat with the yellow-headed blackbirds of the marshes. The Canada goose is found all the way from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic and from the Atlantic to the Pacific. They are probably the most intelligent of all waterfowl. They seem to have a highly developed family instinct and unlike many animals, the pairs mate for life. Certainly there is no more pleasing sight than a family of Canada geese out for a swim. In late summer and fall, the vast acres of the prairie marshes are full of ducks. They are wary of the hunter. Even the bittern nervously takes to the air. the air. Mallard and gadwall, shoveler, widgeon and redhead, teal, pintail, canvasback, the flocks rise into the sky. They will fly south, down the Mississippi Valley, to the Atlantic seaboard, to the Pacific Ocean, even to South America. Through the long winter, the prairie marshes will await their return. <laughs> 